I'm one of a team of graduate engineers who want to make a difference. We built an electric supercar, which we reckon is the best in the world. But we're determined to show that electric cars are here to stay. And we're going to prove it by driving it down the Pan American Highway. It's a prototype, so there are no guarantees that it will last the course. And I'm filming them all the way so that you can join us on our electric adventure. They've driven 15,000 kilometers down the length of North and Central America. But at the start of the South American leg, disaster strikes. Looking through the wheel arch, it started burning. I just don't get how this catches fire. Some wire is burnt through for some reason. I don't know why. We've got to go back. cables burnt through, obviously there was a short somewhere. You can see the, the burnt marks in the battery pack. A bit of a fireworks show, not what we really wanted to start the uh, South American continent on. Started burning here, the pins somehow, we don't really know. In the rain we never had a problem before, and rainwater is not particularly conductive, but seawater is very, very conductive and very aggressive, so I think that's the reason. We've got a lot of work to do to fix it. Yeah, now we're having um, emergency discussion lunch in a very nice German restaurant here in Katharina. We need to actually establish whether it can be repaired or not, and that can only be done in, you know, a proper, secure garage where we have you know, facilities. It is 320 miles from here to Medellin. I say we find a trailer now, work it on there, go there tomorrow. Much bigger city, you're much more likely to find everything. Addressing the issue of trucking it down a section of the Pan American Highway. Not ideal, but we're not going to complete it if we don't get it fixed. So, Trucking the car on a trailer to Medellin, where the facilities are better, is the practical solution. But on reflection, the team finds that hard to swallow. We couldn't live with the idea of trucking the car to Medellin. We're here at the University Politecnico to fix the car. We've managed to get some space. The guys are inside working on the car, and now we have a secure, dry location to get the car back on the road. We don't want to cheat. We want to drive every inch of the Pan American Highway, and that's why we're staying in Cartagena until the car's fixed again. Just giving the car a complete overhaul. Cleaning is the first step. It's definitely really strange, you know, so many times when I was actually filming, things go wrong. Either he's in the car and he breaks it, or it's his birthday and he gets a birthday present and it breaks. I'm sorry about it. <laughs> Clemens is uh, completely stressed now, as I can understand, because he was working so hard getting the car uh, first out of Panama, then here as quickly as possible, and um, now it's here, but it's broken. <laughs> We're losing credibility. We've been driving continuously and like didn't have any issues with the car. And then suddenly we'll be stuck for, for two weeks just, just to fix it. You know, Toby was saying this afternoon, you know, if they find a problem, we can be up and, up and running again in two hours. There's only a finite amount of things that can be wrong with it. The problem, though, is figuring out what these things are. Well, we fix all the fire damage, which is good but uh, we're finding very, very odd behaviour when we're starting up the car. Can't work on a problem that's not consistent. Sometimes something's working, sometimes it isn't. Then something else stops working and then, and then it does work again and, yeah, you just don't know where to stop, start. It's crazy. I don't know. We've been thinking about it probably for two, three hours yeah. now. Just can't work it out. Sure don't know what it is. So, this car, don't care how, it's going to make it to Argentina. Don't care how it's gonna make it. Even if you have to hold it down there, like drag it, I don't know. Five of us in front of it, like when they build the pyramids. <laughs> it's gonna make it. Never give up? No, never give up. We never give up. They all feel the same way. No matter how long it takes, they are determined to get this car back onto the road.
took them six long days in a hot airless garage, but finally they are on the South American roads. Two days driving will get them to Medellin. It's great to be back on the road, but the driving here is the worst driving I've ever seen multiplied by a million. They just have no concept of anything here. Very stressful, very stressful. This always reminds me, it's actually quite dangerous what we are doing, driving these thousands and thousands of miles. And I guess falling asleep is probably the biggest risk. Nobody ever knows what's around the next bend. Heavy rains washed away half the road here. But with a police escort guiding them down the fastest roads, the team is beginning to fall for Colombia's charm. Driving through this, this landscape, seeing this country on a beautiful day, lakes, mountains, it's stunning. Viva Colombia! Okay. The only thing you really hear about Colombia is the violence of the park and the drug problem. And, you know, well, that clearly is still a problem for this country. It has so much more to offer than that. Tonight we're going to uh, be charging up at university. I think we're meeting uh, Juan, who's been very patiently waiting for us. It'd be nice to finally meet him and show him that this project is real, it's not just a fantasy. Uh, it's nice that they could uh, fix it in Cartagena because the, the, the nice thing is to go the whole way from Alaska through Argentina on the road. And Colombia has beautiful places to see and it's better to do it uh, driving and not in a, in a truck. We've now driven since Cartagena about 650 kilometers without a single problem with the car. I'm so happy. Today was a really, really successful day. We've seen big problems, we've overcome them, and we haven't cheated. It feels good. It feels very good. But there's a big challenge ahead. The next leg leads into the mountains, and the SR0 will have to climb 2,500 meters, higher than ever before, really pushing the boundaries. So today we are going from Medellin to Bogota. It's a 250-mile stretch, so it's a, it's a really long one. And we're going up and down to be consuming a lot of energy, basically. Today will be a very interesting drive because we can test our regenerative braking system. Basically, that you use the electric motors as generators. You're gaining potential energy when you're going uphill, and you can regain that energy by going downhill, which would be very interesting how much we can actually regain today, and should be like 5%. We've only got uh, one driver in the car, that's Clemens right now, and no wing on the car. The reason why we've got Clemens in and no wing is A, to reduce the weight, and B, to reduce the drag on the car. And that basically conserves energy and gives us a longer range. We've covered um, 180 kilometers, only used 25% um, um, energy. If, if we were continued driving like this, we could drive 700, over 700 kilometers, which is just fantastic. But then, going up here should consume a lot of energy, because in the end, we're going to end up at like 2,600 meters just here in Bogota. Quite um, worried about whether we can, we can actually make it. Certainly pushing the limits of... of uh, how far this car can go in this kind of terrain. Um, probably gonna have to take it slowly because there's so many trucks and at night it's very difficult to overtake. So we're just gonna be stuck behind the trucks and take it real slow. 60% battery left. Driving through these mountains is pretty crazy. Um, trucks and buses with absolutely 
suicidal attitudes to life and dancing their way up and down the mountain and uh, trying to keep it in a little electric car and a van together going up and down these mountains is quite difficult. We're not exactly sure how much energy will it consume because if you're behind trucks you have to slow down and then you want to overtake them and it takes a lot of energy to overtake them again. There are a lot of uncertainties here. Stretch from Medellin to Bogota, we will probably be the first electric car to have done that on one charge. And obviously, that's a kind of milestone to be proud of. Range wise, and even though it looked quite tight at one point, I'm pretty confident that will make it. Yeah, 30% left, 50 kilometers. That shouldn't be a problem. It just goes down into Bogota. Coming down, you regen a few percent, not not a huge amount, but a decent amount. I mean, there's there's a lot of turns in it, so you actually do have to use your mechanical brakes from time to time as well. But yeah, you get some back. At least you're not using anything. Yeah, health and safety. Regulations are kept quite loose here in Colombia. We haven't been blessed by the nanny state yet. Yeah, just arrived in Bogota. It was very demanding for the car, but it made it. With our range, there's still plenty of juice left, so that's good. And uh, tomorrow we have a day off before our press event on Wednesday. Thursday, forgetting the days. We're here. Put it inside, put it on charge. I don't try, Jimmy. Well, we made it. We made it from Medellin to Bogota, 250 miles. Probably the first electric car in a while to do this. Always surprises you, this car. You know, you think, oh, it's going to push it, but then um, it has a little bit extra in the tank. It's good. <laughs> Even with a spare day in Bogota, the team has no time for sightseeing. With constant changes in the schedule, they have to plan the route ahead, and decisions can be hard to come by. Here from Bogota, where we are right now, we want to get to Cali, 480 kilometers. I mean, yeah, it is a very <coughs> long stretch, but the mountain is right in the middle. I'm personally not happy with it. I think it's dangerous. I think it's more sensible to break it up. You know, when we're going to be in, in Argentina then, if, you know, we're not pushing it? It's a risk. It's a risk more than what we've taken so far. So if we can combine this, driving it from Bogota, and then start in Armenia very early in the morning... I mean, it, it breaks it up into very that's much... That's a good compromise. Things. Leave for Paso next day, I think that's a perfect I mean, yeah, that's compromise. Awesome. So that's decided. They will take two days to get to Cali and one long day to get to Pasto, close to the border with Ecuador. But there is still plenty to do before setting off. So here you can see... Um, Press coverage on this trip has been tremendous. Picture taken in October last year. But the media is a hungry beast that needs constant feeding. And it was finished in March, so nine months to build this electric car. And all this takes time and effort. And then the star of the show can't be neglected. The car's always first and then it's us. We need brake lights. Not brake lights that are always on, but brake lights that are on when you're braking. The more work we do on the car, obviously, the more we learn about the things that we don't know. So. Not much we don't know, and the things we don't know, the longer the journey is, the more we know about it. So by the end, we'll surely know everything. Yes. Problem found. Woohoo! Always feels good. <laughs> 